Hey, have you ever uh, asked yourself the question, how come everybody isn't a Christian? I mean, how come there aren't more people? I mean, there's a lot of Christians, but how come there aren't more Christians? Like, because as far as I'm concerned, and, and I think you'd probably agree with me, it's a pretty good deal. Like, it's a screaming deal. Like, you ever thought about what would you do if you weren't a Christian? I mean, think about it. Forgiveness for sin and, and a home in heaven, eternity that awaits us, and, and the presence of Almighty God who comes to live in us. And he like takes our sin and he gives us himself and his righteousness and we get purpose and we get peace and, and like a whole bunch more uh, stuff and awesome relationship. And I sometimes just wonder, like, why, why isn't everybody on board with this? Why doesn't everybody love God? Well, our text today answers that question perhaps better than any other. And here we read the reason why there is such huge opposition to God and following him. And so here's the answer. You ready? Voices. And that's our title today. Now, of course, not just voices, but it's what the voices are saying to us. Have you learned by now that many of the voices that are out there, they don't always tell us the truth? Now, I'm not saying they're all wrong. There's a lot of, I, I, I call it truth small t and truth capital T. There's a lot of truth small t that will kind of help you make life work on many different smaller levels, but there's not a lot of truth capital T. Truth capital T has to do with who God is and how to know him. And so the reality is there's a lot of voices out there that aren't telling us the truth, especially in terms of truth capital T. And so the question is, what's behind all these lying voices? Who's behind all these lying voices? Well, Jesus helps us with this in John chapter 8, verse 44. He says, when he, Satan, lies, he speaks his native language, for he's a liar and the father of lies. So where do lies come from? The liar, the father of lies. And, and you know, that's his language, lies. That's what he speaks. That's what it says. And Satan needs a platform to share those lies. And that primary mouthpiece are, are all the different voices that are out there. And so I'm not going to talk about all those voices because it's pretty easy to sum it all up into two categories. External voices and internal voices. And that's what this text talks about today. The end of chapter 3 talks about internal voices. Beginning of chapter 4, external voices. And I want to uh, start with the uh, external. But first, the big idea, simple today. We can reject the wrong voices because God is greater. He really is. That's probably why you're here. Let's look first at external voices. That's what every, everybody out there is saying to us. That's what they're writing. That's what they're blogging. That's what they're preaching. That's what they're promoting. That's what they're selling. Friends, family, co-workers, media, television, movies, advertising, internet, social media, movies, music, talk shows, talk radio, celebrities, authors, educators, counselors, religious leaders, politicians, lots and lots of voices. Let's see what John says about this in chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Follow with me uh, as we read. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us. 
But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. So we see here this word spirit, small s, spirits. And it's pretty simple. Don't get all kind of freaked out about that. It's talking about people because we all are spiritual beings. This is people who are spirits. Now, not just people, but what influences people. So there are a lot of things that influence people, including demonic spirits. And that's not to say that that lying voices are demon-possessed, but obviously demonically influenced. Fair enough? And so that's what we mean here by spirits, that influence. And it says here, very clear, don't believe everything you hear. Right? Your mom used to tell you that, right? Don't believe everything you hear, Marky. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. No, she didn't really call me Marky. That's not fair. For those of you who know mom. She did a lot of things, but never called me Marky. Called me other things, but no. The voices out there, most of them don't tell you about the real God and his real son, Jesus Christ. Most of them are not true. And so what he's saying here is test everything. Don't just believe what you hear. Test it. Does it line up with the true Jesus and his word? What does that mean? The eternal son of God. Jesus, the eternal son of God who came to be man, 100% man. He's 100% God, 100% man to die as a substitute sacrifice on the cross as the only possible way for people to be saved and forgiven of their sins. Verse 3 says, if it doesn't line up with that Jesus, then it's the spirit of the Antichrist. And a couple of weeks ago, in chapter 2, we talked about Antichrist, and, 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 and there is an Antichrist coming, capital A, most of us Christians believe, um, that will be kind of a world ruler, that, that God, um, well, that hates God, that Satan possesses, and we're not talking about that, and that's not really all that important to be talking about, because we don't really know exactly who that is, but the most important thing is this spirit of Antichrist, which is already here. People want to, oh, who's Antichrist? What about the Antichrist spirit that's already here? And that's a mentality that says, don't really need God, don't really want God, Antichrist, two words, uh, against Christ. So it's opposition, rejecting him. A lot of people do. And I shared a couple weeks ago that, that the way that this typically looks today is people redefine Jesus. Let's just make Jesus look the way I want him to. And they'll use the name, but it's a wrong Jesus. It's a different guy. And it might sound great. You know, it might be very inspiring even. Uh, but it's a different group. It's not a Christian group. It's the spirit of Antichrist. They're against Christ. But that statement, Antichrist, also means instead of Christ. And that's substitution. Anything that's instead of him. I don't need him. My life is fine. I'm set. My family's all I need. My friends. I've got it going on pretty good right now on my own. I don't really need him. I'm too busy. That's Antichrist instead of Christ. Now, what I just read to you here in chapter 4 is clearly teaching that Christians overcome because God is in us. It's not because we're great. It's not because we're all that smart. It's because God is in us, and we listen to his voice. Unbelievers don't, tragically, and so they believe the lies of the world. And that should explain some stuff. That should explain why people believe the craziest things. Because they listen to the world. They don't listen to God. The voices may be smart, they may be attractive, they may be inspiring, they may be right about some things, but it doesn't make them right about Jesus. Now the good news is God is greater because of he who is in you, greater than Satan, demons, the world, all those lying voices. God is greater. How do you test it? Well, you put it up against the word of God. You get good at this book. Get good at what the Lord 
truly is saying and get good at listening to the Holy Spirit rather than just caving in to all those things out there. You don't have to go read The Secret. You don't have to go read Conversations with God. You don't have to go read, you know, Mystic Vibrations in the Air. You don't have to go read, you know, The Law of Attraction. You don't have to go read, you know, Deepak Chopra, you know, or Eckhart Tolle or any of that. Because all that is, is it's a bunch of pantheism. It's a bunch of energy in the air and just tap in. And and but but it's not and the only the only reason that people get duped by it is because they put Jesus on top. The Christ consciousness. And if you need more info on that, come talk to me and I'll send you stuff to read. But it is all bad. Because it misses the true Jesus. So again, get good at the real. The word of God. And the true Jesus. So that's the external voices. Now, what about the internal voices? It's risky to tell people that you hear voices. <laughs> you say that to the wrong person, and you may end up in a psyche vow. Especially if you have arguments with those voices. But I think all of us here in the room, if we were to be honest, we would say we have moments, many moments, and we argue with voices in our head. And a lot of times those voices aren't very sympathetic. We all know what it's like to be in a group of people, maybe a social setting. You feel a little intimidated. Maybe you're feeling like, oh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. They're pretty important or whatever. They're good looking. They're whatever. And so finally you go, you say something. You take a risk and you think it's going to be witty. You think it's going to be smart. And it just goes, <laughs> right? I, I mean, it just doesn't play. And you're like, oh. And you start hearing those voices. You are such an idiot. That was stupid, right? And these voices start talking to you. And you have this conversation in your head. Oh, you're trying to like salvage what you just said in the group. It might have happened tonight, talking here to somebody. It probably happened at work this last week. It can even happen when we're singing here. And you're like, you know, I'm just going to raise my hands to the Lord singing. And then all of a sudden, this voice is like, you're going to look pretty awesome. You know? <laughs> but then another voice says, oh, don't do that. You're going to look like an idiot. You know, I mean, and now we're having this argument, worshiping the Lord. Are we going to raise our hands or not? You know, and it's just, it, it's just crazy. These are just a few examples. And of course, these are tame examples. What about those things from our childhood? You know, things that, that we still hear. Terrible voices. Perhaps, you know, a parent really, really critical in, in harsh ways. We could never please them, never win their approval. I just expected more out of you. You had your opportunity and you blew it. You've been a disappointment to me. You have always embarrassed this family. And voices like that, as we get older, other authority figures pile on. And it may be a teacher or a coach. Oh, you are underperforming. Oh, man, I'm so disappointed in you. Let down by you. Maybe a critical, harsh boss or in-laws that always tear you down. And each time that happens, our heart, our heart just records more disapproval, ends up becoming more fuel for self-condemnation and hatred. How about voices of rejection and failure from our past? Because we all have failures. We've all been rejected. We've had close people walk out of our lives. We've contributed to that even. We've had groups of people we used to be close with, and all of a sudden... You just, you stop getting invited to stuff, right? Failure in business, maybe a failure where you got fired or, or demoted or just not promoted. More painful than that, failure in family, like a marriage that blew up or, or you feel like a failure in your, your parenting because it didn't go the way you hoped or, or whatever. And you're just like, you know what, I'll always be a loser and there's these voices that we're always hearing about that. And let's not forget our failures before God. And hear this amazing God. He's so loving and so incredible and sent his son. And how come I can't get it together by now? I should be further along than I am in my faith. I just don't love him enough. I don't serve him enough. Okay, have you learned that these voices can be terrible in our heads? And they could lead to the terrible. 
One of the things that voices will lead to is addiction. Because addiction comes, much of it, from self-hatred, where the addict becomes the master at trying to medicate that pain and those voices that we're hearing. It's also terrible because those voices will kill our walk with Christ. There are Christians, they sit in churches for years and don't feel like they can do anything because they're disqualified because of what these voices are saying to them. Well, then how do we deal with this stuff? Because we all struggle with this in varying degrees. So how do we deal with these voices? Well, let's pick up with verse 19, chapter 3. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. So he's saying there's something that you can know, and when you know it, you can be confident of the truth. And what that means is you're on board with reality. You're not like floating out there. So you're on board with reality and what God says is true. How do we know that? Okay, keep reading verse uh, 20. It says this. It says, whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows every, everything. So there are those times, like I was just saying, that our hearts condemn us. Our heart becomes this prosecutor and starts throwing out evidence to accuse us. You're such a loser. You actually call yourself a Christian. What a joke. Look at the mess of your life. God doesn't love you. Well, what do you do? First of all, number one, don't believe everything you think. That's what he's saying. How ridiculous it is to believe just the stuff that pops in our head. Especially when Jeremiah 17, 9 says our hearts can be so deceitful and, and wicked 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5 says, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So there are thoughts that we don't just mess around with them. We shouldn't believe all that we think. And he says, there's something we need to say to convince our heart. He actually uses this phrase, put it to rest. There's something that we can do to put it to rest. Number two, you fight condemnation with a declaration of truth. So you counter the voices that are lying with the voice of God, the only voice that matters. It says, I love this, when our heart condemns us, God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. So when you're feeling the weight of that condemnation and getting beaten down, you say, you know what? Wait, wait a second. You just shut up for a second, okay? Jesus, come here. What do you say about this? And get his truth on the situation, on the perspective. And it says here, he's greater than our heart. He has more authority. What he says goes, and only his voice matters. And I love how it says he knows everything. Because have you noticed that with condemning voices, they don't give us the whole story. They build a narrative from a little bit of evidence, and there's some truth to it, but then they build this big narrative about what a loser we are, and the reality is God doesn't do that. He knows everything. So yes, he knows how bad we are. We don't have to convince him of that, right? right? He knows our sin, and it's worse than we think, and he knows that. But he also knows if we're forgiven, if we're Christians, that we're his children. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And he knows a lot more. Like he sees us when we're going to be in heaven. He sees us in our perfect condition. He sees us five years from now and he sees the growth that will happen. He's seen the growth that's happened in the last five years that maybe we don't see. He knows everything and he's greater than our hearts. So yeah, he knows all the bad things, and, and yeah, it's worse than, than we might think. But here's the thing. When your heart starts to prosecute you, and it starts to accuse you, and, 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 and our heart gets a lot of help. Our heart gets help from Satan, the accuser. Revelation 12 says he accuses day and night. He's like this prosecuting attorney trying to convict us, convict us. But have you learned in the court of law, the prosecutor can't decide 
You know what I'm talking about? You guys have seen enough law, law TV shows, right? The prosecutor can't decide the case. Who decides? Judge and jury decide, okay? So that's good news, that your heart, it's not the final verdict on you. Satan's lies are not the final verdict on you. It's what the Father says. Oh, and by the way, chapter 2, verse 1 says, we have an advocate, in other words, a defense attorney, and his name is? The Lord Jesus Christ, who speaks on our behalf, which is really funny to me, like, like, just in case God forgot, you know what I mean? Just in case the Father forgets, Jesus is there to remind him, he died for Mark. Yeah, I know, he's filled with sin, but my sin is, my, 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 my blood has covered all of his sin, and he is clean, and he is forgiven. It's amazing truth. And so, yes, it's, it's easy to feel this weight. And I, I think there is, there, there's some good in feeling the weight of sin. I think it's very, very important that, that we realize that things like conviction and guilt are good things. Please don't take this message to think that we should blow off all guilt or all conviction. Convictions from the Holy Spirit. And don't let that beat you down or get you all bummed out. When you get convicted, you start feeling guilty about stuff. Praise God. I'm starting to see it completely different in my life. When I start feeling real guilty about stuff, I'm like, thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing me this. This is proof I'm a Christian. And so, yes, embrace the sin, hate it, fear God, and repent and get, get it before God, but then get up and walk in freedom. Walk in your identity. Walk in your position as God's child. That's what he's talking about. So these voices, they're not the whole story because God's greater than, than the voices. And we fight the condemnation with a declaration of truth. You pull rank in your heart. Oh, man, we get so pathetic and wimpy sometimes. We just let those voices in our heart beat us and crater us down into a crevice somewhere. And, and praise God, he's greater than our hearts. So we take the word of God, take scriptures, and apply it to the specific lives. On the back of your notes, I've given you a whole bunch of identity in Christ statements that tell you who you are because of Christ. And man, keep these, like, don't read them while you drive, okay? But keep these close, and because the font's too small for you to read this while you drive, for most of us at least. And pour that stuff into you and pray out loud. Because as you pray out loud, that's how the battle's won. Okay? The enemy can hear you and is put down by those declarations of truth. And so many Christians aren't willing to do this. It's like they just let their feelings beat themselves up. Oh, yeah, I know God loves me. I know I'm forgiven and all that. But I just feel so worthless. Wait a second. Are you saying your feelings trump God? God says, I love you. I bankrupt heaven to send my son for you. I've put my spirit in you. I've done everything I could possibly do to save you. And I, 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 I love you. And we're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I hear you, God. But like what I feel has more authority. I mean, dude. Get over yourself and embrace the forgiveness of your great God who's greater than your heart. Pull rank. It's like that, you know, that interesting movie, The Beautiful Mind. And um, Russell Crowe plays a man who, who has the mental illness of schizophrenia. And, and you see in that movie, I think there's an illustration here, that he, as he starts to learn about this, he starts to learn about the lies of these people and the voices he's hearing, and he begins to rebuke them and to ignore them. In other words, he pulls rank on what's not true. I thought, you know, that's a good illustration. Not that we're schizophrenic as Christians, okay, but it's like, you know, that's a good principle. We pull rank on it, we speak truth to it, and it has to flee. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James chapter 4. Shane and Shane uh, wrote a song years ago called Embracing Accusation. And they sing about um, 
this, this battle that we've been talking about that every Christian struggles with. And, and, and they write this. I, I think we might even have the lyrics uh, for this. They, they say this. They say, oh, the devil is singing over me an age-old song that I'm cursed and gone astray. Singing the first verse so conveniently over me. That's such a true statement. That as sinful human beings, we are cursed and gone astray. Okay, but it's just the first verse. But he's forgotten the refrain. Jesus saves. And then they begin to sing that classic hymn that we sing often before the throne of God above. I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, Upward I look and see him there who made an end to all my sin. Because the sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me. And that's how you counter the voices of condemnation and self-hatred. You speak a declaration of truth. Yes, I'm sinful. But that's not the verdict on me. That's not the end of the story. God is greater than my sin, and he knows everything. Oh, yes, fear God and hate your sin and repent, but walk in that freedom. Who he has made you to be. And then what that leads to is not condemnation, but confidence. Verse 21, dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And so, not arrogance, confidence, that we can know what's true. Again, you can take all of the I am statements that are true about you and speak them. Speak them out and believe them in your heart. The answer to a condemning heart is the gospel of Jesus, the power of God, and his words spoken into our day-to-day experience. That's why I'm going to say it again. And by the way, it's the same answer for external and internal voices. Get good at the book. Get really good at the word of God and the living Holy Spirit word of God to speak these things to us and to bring changes to our lives. Out of the identity that we have in Christ, out of this identity comes a different activity. As we start to see ourselves for who we really are, then the power of God starts to change us. And that's such such an amazing truth. And then what that leads to, verse 21, dear friends, actually verse 22, and we receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit that he gave us. I love these last few verses because it's saying that uh, it's actually quite simple. There are two main commands, believe and love. Just believe, believe the Lord. Believe him at every turn. Believe in Jesus for the forgiveness of your sin, and then just keep believing and love. And when we obey those two commands, it says that our prayers get answered. Our prayers get answered. I think the reason for that is because our prayers are more in line with God's heart. We're not praying for stupid stuff. We're praying for stuff that's really close to his heart because we're believing him and we're loving the loving people. And maybe that's why Some of us, our prayers aren't getting answered because there's different agendas. He says here, if you walk with me and you lean into me and you have a close relationship with me, I want to answer your prayers. 
got a day to conclude. I, I, I don't know, I'm always trying to find an illustration to end with, but I don't have to find one today because the illustration today is going to be the baptism video from baptism a couple weeks ago. I want you to listen to these testimonies. I want you to listen to Pastor Dwayne as some of his teachings in the video. It's just a powerful illustration. Change lives of what the Lord is all about and what he's doing. Let's go ahead and roll it. 